In this final video in our first steps with Painter, we are going to create a custom material. So in the texture set list, you can see that I have the upper set selected. In the layer stack, let's create a new layer. This time, we are going to use what is called a fill layer. I'll click this bucket icon and a fill layer is created. I'm going to go ahead and name this layer pattern. You cannot paint on a fill layer. A fill layer simply fills channels with information such as color, roughness, or metallic data. With multiple channels enabled, a fill layer can represent an entire material all within this single layer. Now, my next step is I'm going to mask this layer. To do this, I'm going to use my geometry mask. Let's control, left click and drag to deselect everything. And then I'm going to single click on the sides of the boot. To exit the mask, I'm going to click the icon for the fill layer. Now, the work that I do on this layer will be masked to the sides of the boot. Next, I'm going to mask this layer with an image. To do that, we're going to use a new type of mask. Here in the toolbar, if I click the Add Mask button, you can see we have an option for Add Black Mask. Here you can see an additional mask is now added here to the layer. This is a layer mask and very much like a layer mask that you would use in Photoshop. A value of black lets you see through the layer to the layers below it, and a value of white lets you see the content of the mask layer. As I mentioned, I want to use an image for this mask. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to my toolbar and I'm going to click this Add Effect button. There are several options, but the one we want to use is Add Fill. This lets me fill the mask with some type of image. Here we have just a slider. If I set the value to black, again, this allows us to see through the mask to the layers below it. If we set this to white, this allows us to see the contents of the layer. This effect is allowing us to fill our mask with some type of value. Now I'm going to come over to my assets and I'm going to choose the image category. Here at the very top, we have this image called arrow bend split. I want to apply this image so I can left click, drag and drop the image here onto this grayscale button. This black and white image is now supplying the fill information I need for my mask. In this mask, the places that are black are going to allow us to see through the layer to the layers below it. And the white areas in this image will show the content of the fill layer. So with this effect selected, I can come over here to the properties. And this is going to allow me to set the projection. This is how I will place the graphic on the side of the boot. So what we're going to do is set this projection mode. I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to choose an option called planar projection. Here in the 3D view, you can see that I have this volume of influence. This allows me to place the graphic in 3D space. At the top of the toolbar, we have tools for move, rotate, and scale. There's also an option here for surface tool, which is very handy. So let's use this to start. I'm going to click the surface tool. Here you can see that I have this box manipulator. If I left click and drag, you can see that the box snaps to the surface of the shoe. This allows me to position the graphic just based on the mesh geometry itself. So I'm going to position the graphic around this area. Now I can come over to my toolbar and I can use my rotate tool and I'm going to rotate the graphic into place. I can then grab my move tool to further position the graphic. Now the graphic is pretty large. So here I'm going to grab the scale tool and simply scale this down globally by clicking and dragging here on the center of the manipulator. Now, one thing you'll notice that as I scale down the graphic, we start to see the graphic repeat here on the surface. And I definitely don't want that. So I can come back over here to the fill properties and simply change this repeat value to none. Now, once again, I'm gonna use my move, rotate and scale tools to position the graphic where I want it to be. I think this is going to work pretty well. So now if I zoom out and take a look at the shoe, I can see that, well, this graphic is starting to reproject over on the other side of the boot. However, it's not quite correct. And in order to fix that, I just need to realign this overall volume of influence. So you can see here that we have this cube and I just want to make sure that the cube is centered in the shoe. So I'm going to grab here this Z axis handle and drag this here towards the middle of the shoe. And if I look towards the top down of the shoe, I can see the box is basically rotated. So now I'm just going to grab my rotate tool. I'm going to grab the green axis and simply line this up. 
Again, I can grab my move tool and let's move this box here towards the center. Now, if we take a look, I can see that both sides of the boot have the logo placed in the same location. If we look at that top down view again, you can kind of see what's happening as I start to move this or better said, rotate this graphic. You can see where it's updating here. So if I make sure that the box is centered or roughly centered into the skate, it will basically duplicate this pattern across the skate. Okay, so with that in place, we have our graphic. We use the geometry mask to mask this graphic to the side of the boot. Then we used a layer mask with an image from our assets to mask the overall content of our fill. So now let's jump back to the fill layer and let's make some changes to the properties of the material itself. So we'll scroll down and the first thing I wanna change is this base color. So I'm gonna click the base color option and I'm just gonna use my sample tool and I'm actually gonna use that bright yellow. So again, I can just sample right from the icon of this suede brush downwards material. And so now you can see that using that layer mask with this graphic, we're able to mask in this pattern. And with that in place, I think I will actually go ahead and just play around with some of the other channels. For example, I think I'll just introduce a little bit of a metallic value. So we get something like this. If this looks a bit too shiny or reflective, I'll just increase the roughness to further diffuse that reflection value. And here we go, we get something like this. Using a fill layer is a great way to add patterns and build custom materials for your projects. Next, I'm gonna add a patch to the side of the boot. This is a material that was created in Substance 3D Sampler. Be sure to check out the sampler tutorials for more information. So I'm gonna come up to File and choose Import Resources, and then I'm gonna to go to Add Resources. In the Content folder, you'll see that you have this patch SBSAR file. Let's open this, and this is going to represent a base material, so I'll set the tag to Base Material. And for the Import Your Resources, I'm going to choose to use my project and then click import. Here you can see that I have this patch material. Now I'm going to left click and drag and drop this material onto the side of the boot. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the fill properties and change that projection mode to planar projection, just as we did previously. I'm also gonna use my surface tool to help me quickly snap this graphic to the side of the boot. Now I'm going to grab my scale tool and scale the graphic down. Of course, it's repeating, so I need to set that repeat mode to none. Now I'll grab the rotate tool and rotate the patch as well as the position tool to place it on the side of the boot. We need to make sure that we set the opacity for this material. So if I come over to the material properties, underneath the channel mapping, there is a mask option. And for the mask, I'm gonna set it to the opacity channel of the material, which was created in Substance Sampler. So I'll choose opacity, and here you can see that the logo now appears correctly on the side of the boot. The height or bumpiness of this material looks a little bit too intense. So what I'm gonna do is just come over to the material properties once again, and I'm just gonna disable the height channel by clicking on the option. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the inside of the boot. I can see that this projection is moving through the side of the boot towards the inside. So here for the fill properties, I'm going to then set the culling, the depth culling option, all the way to 100. I will grab the Z-axis handle and pull it outwards until the logo is no longer projecting on the inside of the boot. Let's take a look at the side and make sure everything is good to go. And that's looking pretty nice. So now what we want to do is basically duplicate this patch so that it appears on the other side. To do that, I'm going to right click on the layer and choose Duplicate Layers. And now I can simply grab the Z axis and drag it here towards the other side. Let's take a look at what we get. So now I'm just repositioning the logo. I'll make sure the logo is not projecting inside the boot. So I'll need to make sure this area of influence as denoted by this dotted cube is not showing inside the boot. So here you can see I'm just moving it out and that will take care of that projection. Now we'll look at the side of the boot and I'll notice that I do have a problem here where the text is now reversed. So to fix that, I'm gonna come over here to the transformations and I have a scale option for the X and Y value. I'm going to unlock this scale so that I can just change the X axis. I'm going to enter a negative one value and then hit enter. That will flip the patch so that it reads correctly on this side. Here I can see that part of the patch is being cut off 
And that is because this area influence is no longer correctly intersecting with the boot. So to fix that, I can just grab my rotate and then just slightly make an adjustment here. So now I can just move the, the patch and get it into the right location. So now that we've finished texturing the skate, we need to export the textures. So here I will go to File and choose Export Textures. You'll notice in the global settings, I have all of the texture sets selected. And then here I can choose an output template. I just need to choose an option for the specific renderer that I will be using. Once I've done that, I can change the size. So for example, my working document size was 2048, but I can choose to export at higher resolutions if need be. Another option is to send the skate directly into Substance 3D Stager for rendering. Here I will go to File and choose Send to Substance 3D Stager. The skate model will be exported and Substance Stager will open in the background. Here you can see that the skate is being loaded directly into Stager. All the materials are applied and I am now ready to start rendering. Let's quickly jump over to my image tab and I'm going to select this background image, use my match image to create the lighting and match camera perspective. I'm going to place the object on the ground plane and here I'll just enable my ray tracing. And with just a few simple steps, I'm able to create this rendered image. I hope you've enjoyed your first steps with Substance Painter. In this course, we barely scratch the surface as there is so much more to learn. This course should give you a good foundation to build on as you continue to learn. Be sure to check out more Substance 3D tutorials. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.